I'm glad I took you on, Tina. I like your attitude. And you're bright. And I know I can rely on you. So I'm putting you in charge of the tenancies. The tenancies? Me? Yep. I want you to oversee the buildings and farms, collect the rents. Generally, keep an eye on things. You can sniff someone on the make a mile off. But I haven't got any experience, Frank. You're local. You grew up on a farm. Not your usual farm. All the better. You'll be able to bring a touch of creativity to that side of things. Are you sure you know what you're doing? You mean, do I trust you with a dingle account? My dad's always been in arrears. He always will be. You know the level of arrears, that's acceptable. I won't expect you to treat your own family any more leniently or harshly than anyone else. I'm flabbergasted. I never thought I'd ever hear you say that. Will you accept the job? Yes, I will. Thanks. Thanks. Sort of the joys of spring as usual. Frank's just offered me a new job. Oh, really? What's that? Centrefold? Old man's fancy? Tenancy manager. Well, I know that's completely beyond your capabilities. So what are you expected to offer in return? A fair day's work for a fair day's pay. Can a dingle do that? I mean, is it possible, genetically? Oh, I think so. You'll be lucky if you last five minutes. That's where you're wrong, you see. Cos I hold on to everything I get. I'm like you in that respect. Comparisons are odious, we all know that. You walk like you're riding a horse. Did you know that as well? And who was it who said we're all sisters under the skin? I haven't got a clue. But he got it completely wrong. Jack's putting his jams in and Betty's entering for prize cows, so what? We've already burgerised one of Sugden's cows, and that were right good. This one makes it even better. What? You're awful slow, old butch. My uncle zach has got a good idea, though. Has he? Why, Dad, what are you going to do? Can't you work it out? No? Imagine, for one second, Jack Sugden's cow in our barn with a smile on its face, standing next to the mincing machine. Yeah? But what would you do, Sam? What would you do? Milk it. Yeah, milk it. Give me strength. Please. You got enough there? Well, she is eating for two. Two what? Continents. Tina will go with you to the solicitors. If she goes, she goes on her own. I thought you might like some company. Anyway, you can help me pick out some new clothes. Size eight. We could get something for you as well. I know this divine little tent shop. Frank, I'm going alone. You needn't worry, I can find my own way straight back without taking your little Rottweiler along with me. Seems fine to me. And your solicitor agrees? I've not been to the solicitor. I thought this was best kept between the two of us. You know, Kim, I have to confess, you've surprised me. Glad to hear it. Yeah, it didn't take much to get you away from Glover. I'm only surprised that you accepted my first offer. Actually, you pay too much. You could have bought David off for far less than a million. I don't think so. Apart from stealing another man's wife, I think he's got principles. <laughs> but you, you were already rich by most people's standards. But wave a big fat check in front of you and you'll do anything. First you dump the man you swear you love, and now you've signed away your baby. I was wrong, Kim. You don't surprise me. You horrify me. You're not fit to be a mother. You're soulless. And I'm ashamed I ever loved you. Right, you know the route. I do. You just try and keep up, that way you won't get lost. Hey, outside our place at half past three. Right, fine. Yeah, and you better be there on the button, otherwise our Mandy will know you've been winding her up. I'll be there. Oh, hey, I'll tell you what. Lose a pace for winner's night out with Mandy. Right. How much did it cost to take a lass out? Well, about 50 quid should cover it. How much? I wonder you don't have much luck with women. I don't think he's going to get there on time. You can't be scared you'll beat him. You don't stand a chance against his car. In a fair race, I don't, Sam. That's why it ain't going to be fair. All right, time for another. You're joking. 
Uh, I've three, he said. Dear, if you've already had two pints. Yeah, then after this one, it'll be three. And I'll have to take your car keys off you. Sean, stop it. Are you serious? Yes, mate. Drink driving ruined my life. I want that to happen to you. Excuse me, I haven't seen a light brown cab roaming about on its own. Um, sorry to trouble you, but you haven't seen a cow about Oh, Mandy's out on a date tonight. Who's a lucky man? Dave Glover. Funny how he always goes for a type. She knows what he's after, though. She's not soft enough to fall for it. He's getting worried about David since he lost his job. Drinking too much, splashing out on flash cars. He seems bent on having a good time. It won't be long before he's back to that cafe. That'd leave Sean at a loose end. Why are you telling me? Just thought I'd mention it. I know what you like for Kathy's cast-offs. Shall we deliver the clock to Mr Pollard's first? We'll do it after I've stuffed Glover. Well, how are you going to beat him? Well, if you don't get here soon, I won't have to. Today, it's such an impressive display. More leaks than North Yorkshire water. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm delighted to say, first prize goes to Seth Armstrong. <laughs> You can't try and tell me that she's back with Frank for anything but money. Come on, Kim. I'm not going to take that line down, are you? Frank, please, I'm tired. I'm going home for a rest. Oh, stop worrying. I'm not worrying. I had something to tell you, honey. I can't remember what. Look, I'll make it nearly half past. So where do you fancy going tonight, Mandy? Hey, and Dave Glover will even be paying. <laughs> well, 20 quid towards it. I thought it were 50. Hey, you go back to thinking, stupid. That's it. He's disqualified. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> everyone was at the show. These things don't come with four-wheel drive for rough terrain. Have you been crying? Just some dust in my eyes, that's all. Oh, what's the matter? Can't you stand the competition with little Tina? You're losing your grip. Just go away, Chris. She is much younger than you, and I have to say, she's very pretty. Sharp as well. In fact, she's everything you used to be. And she never betrayed my father. If I throw it, you know, I'd let you off the hook with Mandy. Hey, come on. There's honour at stake here. Oh, you old romantic. Nah, can't let me new car down, can I? Has anybody got a flag? Hang on. Right. Are you ready, gentlemen? So, this is where it all started, I suppose. You and the horny-handed son of toil. Now he's gone. My father's lining up a newer model. All you've got left is your horse. Your only friend. And you can't even ride. Not in your condition. Not after last time. You are scum, Christopher. Just think how cross Dad would be 
have you got on that horse? I mean, the poor old man's so desperate to prove his virility, having another child, to show the world he can still do it. I mean, we, we, all, we all know it's not even his. But he doesn't care. He's convinced himself. I'd stay well away from that horse, if I were you. <laughs> so that I can take a shortcut. They tricked me. Look, get in, you can get the gate. I can still get him if we go down Connaughton Road. It's dead romantic. It's like nights nice jousting and that. You should have tied your favours to Dave's arm. You know what? Your bra, then. Ah. Ah, that they give him something to think about. Biff? What? Hey! Come on, get it, move! Come on! Ah. My dad's put the traffic lights in the wrong place. Club is slowing down for him. Ah, <laughs> you burk! <laughs> <laughs> Did my dad get a lorry or not? No! Ah! Close your window! Eh? Quick! Ah! Put wipers on! We're gonna crash! Mandy, it's you and me tonight. I hope you didn't lose on purpose, Dave Glover. No, honest. No, we took a shortcut through fields. Saved us. What? Oh, no, what are you telling up you for? You cheating scumbag! Well, it looks like your date's still on, Dave. You know what they say, Dave? Winner takes all. Reckon you can handle it. Uh, Mandy. Hard to get. Oh, I. Don't you be getting any ideas, David Glover? <laughs> I think it was going a bit too far. It was the truth. I know. It was about time she was hurt. Never forget she almost killed me with her little games. Yeah, but you've got what you wanted. Kim and Dave have split up. The baby's yours and, and Kim's been humiliated. You've been putting her down as well. You were on fine form today. And now I wish I hadn't pushed it quite so hard. She's in a state, Frank. Don't kid yourself, Tina. Kim's like a wild animal. You look away first, you're dead. And you're not going to look away? Not for a minute, Tina. Not for a minute. Oh, you're back from the show. Yeah. We've had a very satisfying day. I hate to spoil it for you, but... but Kim's horse seems to have gone missing from the stables. And there's no sign of Kim, either. I'm a real one. 
done this time, it'll kill pain. Oh, are you trying to get me drunk, David Glover? <laughs> Would I? People vodka them, please. <laughs> Sorry. No problem, but I usually answer to Carly. Or uh, can I buy you a large gin and tonic? You're right. I'll remember that. Why do I get the impression you're not alone? Well, uh, because it's not my day. Hi again. Your hands are filthy. So they are. Fancy me not noticing. What happened? I'm furious my car won't start again. We'll get a taxi. What, a girl on her own? Oh, come on, there's too many horror stories. Well, it's better than walking. Yeah, but not as good as getting a lift off a knight on a white steed who uh, calls you Kim and then forgets to tell you his name. It's Dave, but... Um... Well, I know. You're with someone. My place is only five minutes away. She won't miss you. But still, like you said, it's not your day. It doesn't seem to be mine either. Five minutes. Five minutes. David! Don't worry, boys, just me playing out again. David! David! You gotta say what you say. Thanks, Rob. Good night. Cheers. Hey, you don't have to do that, you know. Well, you're all on your own, aren't you? Aye. More so now than ever. I know how you feel. I was a mate, you know. But I can't talk to him. Not about an Alton Gordon. At least you've got a mate. You got Frank? Yeah. Frank's brilliant, but... I can't have girly chats with him. I can't tell him my grossest secret. Isn't that what Mandy's for? Yeah, she should be, but... Do you know, it scares me sometimes. It's like the more time I spend at home farm, the harder it is to go home to my family. I don't find that hard to understand. Oh, I love them dearly. Even Butch. But I feel like a stranger sometimes. Like I don't really know them. I know them, but they don't really know me anymore. And that frightens you? Yeah. Big kid, aren't I? No, oh, it just means you're growing up, that's all. I mean, when you're a kid, you're frightened of the dark. Walking on cracks in the pavement. Then you grow a little bit older and uh, you get different fears. Like going bald. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Tell you like. OK. You win. I've got a confession to make. I'm still scared of the dark. I could keep a light on. Sounds good to me. What the heck happened? I'm stupid. Fat and stupid. I should have known Dave Glover would never go for anyone like me. I'm so sorry. You're not the one that has to be sorry. You make me feel ten years younger. It's lucky you don't have the same effect on me. You'd end up in prison. <laughs> I'm serious. Yesterday were the end of the line for me. With Brit pregnant and the brilled cream boy ready to chuck me out of Woolpack. Well, Big Al's put a stop to that, hasn't he? Yeah, but you're the one that made the real difference. I just listened. You did a lot more than that, love. 
You made me see things straight, realise what I was going wrong. All part of the service. Hey, but now I know what I want. If you agree. Hey, have you seen the mess your brothers have made of my car? We're getting a cleaning bill for this at least. Well, that'll do you no good, Eric. Still, if you ask nicely, I'm sure Dad and our butch will fix it up for you. You can give me a lift up there now. You'll feel at home at our place, Eric. It's full of old wrecks. Uh, hey, Tina, I want to talk to you. It's important. Well, it'll have to wait. I've got to get a change of clothes before I go to work. Well, tonight, then. Al owes me an evening off. OK. I'll see you after work. Sick and tired of your family. By the time they pay their debts. Always oh, have, Eric. Just had her own way of doing it, that's all. <laughs> This is my car. Sure, it's you, was it? What? Hey, taking advantage of our Tina. Oh, hey, keeping her out all night. Oh, God, not again. Give over, Dad. I've just met him. Sam and Butch smashed up his car, so I said you'd fix it. So who are you with? Mind your own business. She you know how to treat me? Hey, no respect. You have my sympathy. Now, what about my car? Oh, right, yeah. Well, it's uh, been a while since I've done any panel beating. But it's like riding a bike, innit? You never really forget. <gasps> I had a great night, man. I can't wait to hear about you and sexy Dave. <laughs> He's not worth upsetting yourself over. Tina, you had a bloke kill himself over you. With me, they just kill themselves laughing. I'm not proud of what I did to Luke. I mean, just because I don't show it, I still hurt inside, you know. I know. Dave Glover's going to regret what he's done to you when this family's finished with him. I don't want him beating up Tina. I just want him to like me. Yeah, well, that might be a bit harder to sort out. I mean, am I doing something wrong? Do I come on too strong? Maybe you just picked the wrong bloke. But you always have guys after you. Now you've got Terry panting after you. It's not like that, man. No? No! We just both got lonely at the same time. Cheered each other up. We're just mates, really. I wish I had a mate like that. Right now, I feel like Daisy's the only friend I've got. Well, looks like our little guest is going to be here a bit longer. Chris is working late. I'll fix him some tea in a bit. I didn't expect you to be so good with kids. Well, I've had plenty of practice, haven't I? I was Sam and Butch aren't much older than this in their heads. No, but it's good of you to help out. Can I offer you dinner tonight? Oh, that would have been great. Unfortunately, I've already got myself a date tonight. Oh, I see. New man in your life? No, nothing like that. Just an old mate. Chance to have a gossip. Well, I'm glad to hear her. I wouldn't want to see you chucking yourself away on one of those local lads. You're worse more than that, Tina. I don't mean to interfere, but I've got used to having you around the place. I'm being a bit selfish, I suppose. At your age, you're bound to be off. I'm settling down somewhere. Oh, I don't know. After what happened with Luke, it'd take a lot to get me involved in something serious again. Yeah, I suppose we both got a lot to be cautious about after the mistakes we've made. I'll go and fix Joseph some tea. We're going to have to disguise him. Otherwise, something's about to smell a rat. What did you have in mind, Sam? A false beard and a moustache? We could paint a red. That might throw him off the scent. All dressed up for your date, I see. Manda, I told you it's not like that. We're going out for a bite to eat and a gossip. You may see it like that. But I won't trust that Terry Woods as far as I could throw him. Evening, all. I've come to collect Tina. I want a word before you go. Skip it, Dad. This is still my house and I'll be earning it. Now, us dingles have got our pride. And if I hear you've been treating our Tina the way Dave Glover did our Monday, you're a dead man. I'll bear that in mind, Zach. See ya. What are you blubbing for now? I was speaking up for you. Yeah, and helping it spread all around the flaming village. Oh, I wish you'd leave me alone, the lot of you. Please turn that music down. 
Doesn't seem too loud to me. How am I supposed to get Alice to sleep? Well, I suggest you invest in some earplugs. I see the honeymoon's over between Pollard and Cathy. I never expected it to last long. Do you know, people in this village just can't seem to get on with each other. We're not like that. No, we're all right. That's because we're just mates now. We've got no complications. We don't expect anything from each other. Tina, I know I treated you bad at the start. That's all forgotten now, Terry. Anyway, I prefer it like this. We can just call each other up, have a good laugh, forget our troubles. Well, maybe it could be more than that. What do you mean? Well, last night, it changed the way I looked at things. I saw that it was you that I cared about, not Brit. I've been a fool. It's not too late to make up for it. Terry, we've got a good thing going between us as it is. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Well, why go and spoil it by getting serious again? It's what made it go wrong in the first place. Only because I messed it up. Maybe it was for the best. You said you were too old for me. That it would never work. Yeah, but you didn't believe me, did you? I mean, I mean, even then you could see it. You can't pretend that you don't care about me. I'm not. So much has changed since then. Yeah, but nothing that can't be undone. I'm asking for a second chance. I love you, Tina. And I know that we can make a go of it together. All you have to do is say yes. Is that happier they'll be? You reckon aerobics is a good idea, Beth? Well, I think the holidaymakers will go for it. It's not exactly my scene, though. Well, I spare you and Linda again enough exercise. I didn't realise that Biff was part of the decision-making process around here. We're all entitled to an opinion, Chris. Well, you can start by listening to mine. Rachel only took up aerobics because she was bored. It, I mean, it's a hobby, and that's how it should stay. She seemed pretty serious about it to me. And another thing, the holiday park is for families, and I don't think having a lesbian instructor is the sort of image we're looking for. Well, now you've managed to insult your sister and your wife. I think you'd better stop before you start on me. Can I ask a favour, Frank? I need a lift at lunchtime. No problem. I could do with getting up. As a matter of fact, there's something I need to ask you, too. There's a big conference coming up in London. All the independent operators are going to be there. We're down for two delegates. I thought you and me might enjoy a break in the big city. Oh, I'd love to, Frank. Come on, I'll tell you all about it. What are you smoking at? Nothing, Chris. Good because things are getting a bit slack round here, and I've got quite a list of jobs for you. Why do you want me to stop here? It's where Luke died. A year ago today. So that's why the flowers. I thought you'd been a bit quiet. Like you said, we've both made mistakes. Doesn't do any good going on blaming yourself, you know. I wouldn't do that. Tough as nails, me, haven't you heard? Want me to come with you? Thanks. But I need to be on my own for this one. What the hell are you doing here? Same as you, I suppose. Oh, really? You've got no right. If it hadn't been for you, he'd still be here. I suppose all this is for his benefit, is it? To prove you've still got feelings. You OK, Tina? Yeah. I'm all finished here.
They were the most adventurous of the litter. I mean, I found him in a bathroom once. Poor little thing. Probably thought he was safe there. Only time you go in, it's Christmas. He's never been gone this long, though. Hey, you found little Eric. Little Eric? Hey. Oh, yeah. Butch called him that because he was greediest at litter. He must have strayed a long way if he got into your land. He didn't stray. We kidnapped him. Hey, that's a damaging admission, lad. You're lucky with a kind-hearted family. We could be talking criminal proceedings here. Don't try and take the moral high ground with me, Dingle. I'm not saying what Robert did was right, but we all know why he did it. I don't know what you're talking about. The cow that was eating my lettuces this morning. You can't blame us if Jack can't keep his herd in check. She'll build bigger fences. Your Sam took him away from the agricultural show. Hey, you can't prove that. And it wasn't the first time either. Now, if you lot don't keep away from my herd in future, I'll put the word around every dairy farmer in the Dales. We're the Dingles. We're not frightened of a load of farmers. Oi! You've had a bad year, Zach. What with the BSC and the milk scare. A lot of them are coming to the end of the tether. They'd be glad of somebody to blame. You'll be the first port of call for every bit of petty pilfering or criminal damage. You'll be fed up having the police crawling all over here. Just think what the coppers might find if they come and take a good look around this place. It's up to you, Zack. Leave us alone and we'll return the favour. If not, I promise you'll regret it. I kind of got married, I might have had one of them. That'd be no good to you. You can't set a trap for it or stick a shotgun up its backside. Hi. I've come to see Mr Tate. Is he around? Which Mr Tate? There's the woman you want to talk to. Hello. You must be the lady of the manor. You could say that. I heard Frank Tate's wife was good looking. I didn't expect someone so young to. Well, there is an age gap between us, but it's never been a problem. Steve, have you come to see me? I was just going to ask Mrs Tate where you were. Oh, that's not Mrs Tate, no, that's only my father's... my father's secretary. I'm his PA, and there are certain things that only I can do for him. I'm sure there are. Come over to the office. Will you get that thing off? I've had to listen to it all day. Hey, someone coming through. That's all I've heard since he brought it in here. It's great, isn't it, Tina? I'm glad you think so. Hey, Mandy, get out there. It's in a built-up area. Three lorries, two cars and the road's blocked. You clean up. Oh, not tonight, Uncle Zach. I'm going to Pollard's. Are you? Well, aren't you? Singles night. <laughs> and who's going to be there to get off with? Dave Glover. You fancy me and I'll do you. No, I don't. Oh, come on, team. I'll have a laugh. I won't. Mandy, it'll make us look as if we're desperate. We are desperate. I mean, look, the only people who go out with each other. See what you mean. Desperate. <laughs> well, our Sam said it'd be three girls to every bloke. Since when has our Sam been able to count? Looks more like five blokes to every girl. At least that Dave Glover in here. He will be. I can feel it in my kidneys. Do you know, the only halfway decent bloke here is that Sean, and I can see him any time. Well, even Eric's better looking than that bloke over there. You're buying the ladies a drink, Zach. Huh? Do we have to? It is the accepted custom. Keep your money in your pockets, Dad. We'll have a bottle of house red and four glasses. Uh, is there a Cabernet Sauvignon suitable for the Dingle family? We'll have a Cabernet whatever you like, but we're paying red biddy prices and nothing else. Uh, Kathy. Eric, just a minute. Oh, no rush. Me and Artina go and tell us about him. The bloke's going bananas. He says it's white. It is white. Well, it should be other colour. Red. <sighs> Eric. Come here. Coming. Is there a problem, my dear? Sam has put white wine into red wine bottles. Idiot. Give the customer his money back. Phew. Evening, Sam. I only did what you told me, Mr. Pollard. Oh, I'd like to come out of your wages. No, it won't. Mind your own business. Don't take it out on Sam, because he's not as devious as you are. You should be up in court for what you tried to do. Oh, Harkett's a Galahad. Now give Sam his full money, 
or I'll make a phone call. Is that a threat? Yeah. Told you there'd be nobody here. There's all them blocks. They're waiting for entertainment. I'll give them entertainment. Do, 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 Andy, do, do, do. whatever you're doing, stop it. <laughs> uh, Sam, come here. What's up, Dad? I want to introduce you to someone. I've been telling her all about you, and she's fascinated. Now, uh, this is Tina, my daughter, and Mandy, my niece. Uh, these two are Butch and Sam, my sons. How do? How, How are you? What do you think? Of what? Eh? About Lisa. You know what she is, don't you? She's a pig farmer like me. <laughs> I've never met anyone like her. <laughs> We've been talking muck all night. <laughs> what can I do for you, sexy legs? We're pleased, eh? <laughs> yeah, thanks. Go smoke your eye, Francis. How far's the nearest petrol station? Oh, don't worry about that. You're in the hands of the Fifth Emergency Service. I'm in rather a hurry. Oh, you're with the right team then. We've just got to make a call first. Oh, Mandy will get you a burger when we stop, won't you, Mand? Oh, no, if she's paying. You can have this one on me. Or would you rather get your choppers around a dingle dog? Oh, get in there! Oh. <laughs> We're discussing activities, or the lack of them at the Holiday Village. Oh, I know. Poor show, isn't it? I've already had two punters whinging at me today. I think you should stick to things you know about. Drop us a line when you can think of something. Oh, but I've had an idea. That's why I came in. I was going to suggest it to you, Chris. Well, go on. Well, right on our doorstep, we've got two medal-winning ballroom dancers. They could take classes. That sort of thing appeals to people of all ages. Terry and Viv Windsor. The barman and the postmistress. I mean, it's hardly Fred and Ginger, is it? Do you think they'd be interested? Well, you could ask them. Oh, no. But they both get on with people. And I think you could probably get them quite cheap. Even better. Will you approach them, Chris? No. I will. Look, this is ridiculous. Don't get them in a twist. We're here. At least we should be. Has there been an accident here, Paul? Don't worry, we've managed to get it clear. Get it clear? Do you want a burger? I'm vegetarian. Let me get out. He'll run me to a petrol oh, station. Oh. This is you, Pear's fault. Morgan of that pig woman picking up this. Excuse me. Why? What have you done? There'll be plenty more disasters. Do you mean to say you were hurt? Uh, ambulance it. chasing, it's called. It's immoral. Oh, aye. Yeah, it's all right for news reporters and lawyers to do it, isn't it? But when it comes to us trying to minister a bit of good old some grub... Aye. Belt up Zack and get us home. It's Uncle Zack to you. <laughs> Uncle Wazzock, more like. <laughs> this mob subscribed to the same philosophy. Oh. Uh, Zack? And it comes... <laughs> <laughs> what was the car? Is that all you can think about after all I've been through? What the hell have you lot done to her? Done to her? Done to her? We've done her a favour. Aye. Anyone could have picked her up out in the wild. It was horrible, Steve. Hand it over. Hey? Compensation for me losing business. After all, we rescued you, love. And that's a thought, yeah. You tell her. And the fur. What? Cab fur. 45 miles a pound a mile. Get nutted. 45. How much is that? I'm waiting. Hey, you can whistle. Pay them, Steve. It's extortion. Please! 45 by one. That's 45 quid, mate. Hey, I hope you can remember where you left the car. 
I've got a proposition for you. Not tonight, Josephine. You don't know what it is yet. I can guess. Well, it involves getting to grips with the woman, if that's what you mean. Oh, I'm not in the mood. Thought you had the night off? Oh, no, somebody let me down. I've got nothing better to do. Usual, please tell. That's the woman I meant, Terry. I want to set you and Viv up. Uh, shouldn't you be taking them back to your clan? Am I missing something here? The perfect couple. Frank wants you to run dancing classes. What? He'll pay you. Oh, no way. Well, why not? Look, I mean, I know we had that silly misunderstanding. Oh, well, you nearly bust me nose. Uh, yeah, but I've seen the light. I mean, you're a mate. <laughs> you're the one bloke I don't mind dancing with. <laughs> I'll be dancing with all sorts in classes. It's all right, Terry can keep an eye on you. Brilliant. I'll tell Frank you're up for it, then. What <laughs> frame it! Don't bother. There'll not be much left by chucking out, sir. Are you down in the dumpster? Aye. We made 50 quid. You see the look on that woman's face, though? Ah, she's a snob. It didn't help our Francis pressing himself against her either. Don't get possessive, Mandy. I'm down in the dumps, our Sammy, because I'm not valued. I value you, Dad. I'm sorry, son, but that doesn't lighten the gloom. Hey, we made a £50 note, Tina. Why aren't you lot been back for tea yet? Me Dad. Oh, what's up with you now, misery guts? Oh, I knew I'd get sympathy off you. Mm. For me? Well, you are Mr Zachariah Dingle. Who's it from? I don't know, I just picked it up off the map. Hey, It's from her? We're on the back of the fire. Hey, it's a good job you didn't. I'd have done you a favour. You're useless with women. Hey, Lisa doesn't think so. Listen, dear Zacharias, hey, she's very correct, I hope you don't think I'm being forward. Hey, she can be as fast as she likes. <laughs> I'm not one to chase a chap, but I don't mind saying I'm smitten. Ah, uh, uh, smitten. What's smitten? I wonder if you would step out with me. We have a lot in common, especially the, uh, the pigs. So how about it, Zacharias? Oh, ain't it nice? It is. It's very nice. It's pathetic. P.S. Please keep this to yourself. I've got my reputation. Hey, drinks are on me. Oh, he always did play hard to get. Uh, same again, Terry. Uh, hey, I found myself a woman. That pig farmer from Robblesfield way. Earlier. Oh, yeah? Is he all right? Fine. He started the treatment. What is it that they're doing to him, exactly? Oh, I don't know, some sort of hormone treatment. I didn't ask the details. It's a problem with men. You never ask the right questions. Very true. That way we don't get any wrong answers. You haven't told me what tonight's about, either, yet. You'll find out soon enough. Just one thing. Whatever you hear tonight is totally confidential. No one in the village must hear anything about it. Do you miss Faye? At the moment? Definitely not. How about you? You missing Chris? You shouldn't have bought me that dress. That was worth it just to see you in it. You looked stunning. I didn't, did I? <laughs> I know. Hello, Rachel. Hello, Frank. Hi. Chris rang earlier, said he couldn't get hold of you. He just wanted you to know that he was fine. Oh, good. Looking after my grandson. Zoe. Oh, I see. Well, enjoy your meal. I'll tell Chris that I ran into you next time he rings. He's probably worrying. I doubt it. Hello, Tina. Is Kim okay? Frank, you made it. We were beginning to think you weren't coming. Don't, I'm sorry, mate. The traffic. Let me introduce you. My assistant, Tina Dingle. Let me tell Chris he saw us. Probably. It doesn't matter. Half the village will know by now. Are you all right? No. I don't feel comfortable with them here. Do you mind if we leave? Don't let him get to you. He already has. No problem. Could I have the bill, please? Tell you what. We'll pick up Joseph and then I'll make you a nightcap. Fine. A very productive evening. Very. I think you got a good deal there. Eh? Me? He's a rogue. Every time we do business, I do all the work and he makes all the money. But what can I do? I like the man. So do I. Where did he find you? You haven't got any sisters, have you? No, just two brothers. Big lads. Pity. Your cab's here. Right. I'll give you a bell tomorrow. Bye, Tina. Nice to meet you. Bye, Don. See you soon. I 
don't think he liked you. No, really. <laughs> There's his rent. Ah, on time. That's what I like to see. Well, it's more than your family can ever manage. I don't discuss tenancy business with employees. Oh, you've really got your feet under Chris's desk, haven't you? Have you got a problem with that? Nah, not me. But if I were Chris, I might start worrying about my job. Well, Biff, I'm just a good little worker, trying to help out where I can. Really? Free for lunch, Tina. Of course. What's happening? Business meeting. I want you to use your legendary charms on Councillor Draper. I'll be there. You're a clever girl, Tina. He's asked me to go and see him at his sports club. Yeah, he always fancied himself as a bit of a fitness freak. Well, you wouldn't know watching him play. It was really hard letting him win. He didn't win. We did. I reckon that quarry's as good as up and running, no? Hello, Zoe. What brings you out here? I've just done a call at Godwin's farm, so I was passing. And I wanted to talk to you anyway. I'll leave you to it. Gotta get changed. 